Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Garn from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd Road. And welcome to it. My name is John Justice, Depeche Mode, the podcast. Continuing this week's worth of shows as we await the release of Memento Mori on Friday. Tour starts tonight, right? Tomorrow. Tour starts tomorrow. I'm getting my days all messed up. Today's the 22nd. Tomorrow's the 23rd. Man, and I emailed my contacts thinking that it's (laughs) tonight. So my apologies, guys, if you happen to be uh, hearing this. So, yeah, we will uh, be talking about the tour on on Friday with the release uh, of the album. But I definitely wanted to uh, do another episode uh, today just based off the amount of listener feedback that I've received um, over the course of uh, the past day or so with the uh, vinyl being shipped from Amazon early and a lot of people having the opportunity to listen to the album, plus those that have gone and downloaded uh, the uh, the leak. So for the rest of the week, I'll continue to share my thoughts. Might take a break uh, tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see what kind of response uh, I get overnight. Might take a, a break from the show uh, tomorrow, but definitely I'll be back on Friday with the official release of the album and uh, the first reviews of opening night of the tour. So just be aware that uh, the episode on Friday will be filled with spoilers for the tour for those that uh, may be trying to avoid that. I had thought about it briefly, attempting to avoid spoilers for the tour, but I know that that's just going to be an impossibility. I'm just dying to know what the set's going to look like. That's all. That's what I can't wait to, uh, that's what I can't wait to see. So let's go ahead and get into it. I got a lot of listener feedback. That's the whole reason why I'm doing the show uh, today. As always, you can email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com, talkshownerd at gmail.com, or leave a comment up on YouTube if you happen to be listening to it there. We'll start off with um, Modehead101. Now, what I have here is a listener feedback that includes a lot of Um, reviews and thoughts on the album, and then also other comments, obviously, as it relates to the podcast. So we'll start off with uh, Modehead101, who writes, like everybody else, I'm uh, ridiculously excited for the album and really impatient for its release to the point where I uh, now I have booked a day off of work just to have this album spinning on repeat, loving the podcast, too. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Hi, John. Wow. Uh, My jaw dropped when you mentioned that Depeche Mode would be heading to Australia for 2024. For fans in a city of 5 million people like Melbourne, who suffered from the infamous 1990 world violation show a tour show cancellation while in line at the venue and continue to live off the memories of the one Melbourne devotional tour show, it's amazing to hear they will be coming uh, back again. Uh, there are still so many questions and so much excitement, but thank you for sharing the thoughts of the fans down under. Uh, it may have helped our cause. Who knows? Now the build up for Memento Mori cannot wait. So far, I'm loving what I've heard. Cheers, Michael C. Thank you, Michael C. The Silver Fox writes, being a DM fan since 85, the first gig I went to was Wembley Arena in April of 86. I'm really looking forward to Memento Mori's release, and Caroline's Monkey is intriguing me. This is a song I'm really looking forward to hearing. Love your show. I found it by accident, but bravo, and thank you from England. Uh, Thank you, and it seems like most people have found my show show by accident, I probably because I haven't done a very good job of self-promoting my show. James Rigby, becoming a friend of the show, hear from James a lot, apparently... I have uh, heard slash read that on an interview with Dave in Volt Magazine, Dave said that there's five fully recorded and fully fledged songs that haven't been put on the album, not even on the deluxe edition of the album, which I think for me is a bit of a strange decision, or even as B-sides for Ghosts Again, singles or future singles. It looks like we're going to have to rely on someone to leak those songs, just like who did for Delta Machine Demos, which is a shame. I wonder if those songs... um, Because we heard the same thing, and I mentioned on yesterday's show, Peter 2 on Twitter, T-O-O, had mentioned that I think two of those songs are Gore Butler tracks. I'm wondering if they're holding back potentially for another release. 
Um, Depeche Mode hasn't done this very often. I mean, you kind of go back to Shake the Disease and that song ended up on the um, singles collection at the time or catching up with here in the uh, in the States. Uh, Martyr was another example of uh, of a track that they released as a single that was a part of the uh, sessions for playing the angel but didn't end up uh, making it on the uh, on the album uh, plus better days and and newborn but those ended up becoming a uh, b-side so perhaps they've got an EP and they're looking at maybe releasing that down the uh, down the line I think it all depends on the quality of the show of the songs themselves but considering that they are fully produced and recorded, um, I guess I would be a little bit surprised if they weren't released at some point. I mean, they've certainly released, you know, songs that didn't make it on the album for obvious reasons as, you know, as B-sides before. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. If anything, it's something that we can kind of look forward to and anticipate um, beyond, of course, a brand new album. Global Video Expert writes, as it relates to... The potential set list and what we were mentioning yesterday with the songs that have been performed so far live that will most likely end it end up on the um, on the tour, uh, right? It's basically the same songs every tour. Well, yeah, that they're all their songs. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Uh, all great songs, but uh, it would be great to mix it up more. Instead of pain that I'm used to, maybe photographic, fly on the windscreen, or rut. Yeah, it's got to be painstaking for the for for the band to um, put together these uh, these set lists. I do. I am curious um, for a lot of things, but uh, I was shocked to hear that Taylor Swift did somewhat forty four songs live. Now I don't know in what capacity. I watched her con uh, her concert for Redemption on a Netflix, which was actually really good. I like that album quite a bit. Uh, and I know that she did some songs that were kind of mashups. So she snuck in, you know, two or three that were kind of combined together. And I don't think there were 44 songs on that particular uh, special that I, that I watched. But I do wonder if Dave is perhaps slowing down his stage presence. If he's not as animated, um, you know, I mean, certainly was the last tour, but as they get on in age, you know, if Dave is is perhaps, you know, not as active as the word I'm looking for on stage, maybe they'll, you know, do more songs than the typical just 19 to uh, to 20. Um, you know, then again, they haven't really done that for years past, so I kind of doubt that'll happen. So we'll know in a day or two. No, we'll know on Friday. We'll know on Friday morning what the set list is going to be. Uh, friend of the show, uh, Lana Hughes. Lana or Lana, you're going to have to let me know about that. Um, the album OMG, I don't mind if you want to use this reaction on the podcast, but it's okay if you don't, I am what an absolute masterpiece. This is Dave's voice is pristine. Martin's voice is one is one of his best on this track. This would be soul with me. The lyrics coupled with the music are intoxicating, exhilarating, melancholy, ethereal, frenetic, classic DM, and a real roller coaster of emotions. I got lost in the music. I got goosebumps on my soul. I could literally eat Dave's voice on this album. It's so good. I'm hopeful that some tracks will be pay played uh, live. Can you imagine hearing people are good live? Yes. I know I'm uh, gushing, but it's gush worthy. I just knew you know when you know that you know that this album was going to be special, and it is. I can't wait for the world to uh, hear it. I'm going to listen to it again and again and again. You know, and I'm and I and as I mentioned, I really love the fact that people are gravitating towards it and picking up on sort of the same themes that I have. While it's pretty clear that, it, as subjective as it is, people are definitely gravitating toward towards a, a tip of, uh, some songs more than others, um, and for ones that I enjoy. That being said, there's some common threads that I've seen in the commentary around it, especially that, you know, this this album works well as a as an album as a whole. Um, there's some uh, comparisons to Black Celebration less in the sound of the of the record, but more in how at the time when Black Celebration was released, they mentioned the label mentioned they didn't really have any singles on it. You know, hindsight being what it is. 
we kind of scratch our heads and go, there's a lot of songs on that album that could be singles. But at the time, they, you know, that this wasn't the type of music that was played on the radio. And so this album kind of falls in line with that as well, in my opinion. Um, Rob writes, and I totally agree, I miss waiting in line till midnight at Music Plus to buy new records. I worked at Music Plus for years. I was one of the youngest managers that they ever had at a Music Plus uh, location in Lake Forest, California uh, in the uh, uh, mid-90s. Actually, it would have probably been more like early 90s, now that I think about it. Feeling positive and excited about the new record as it's probably their last, writes Rob. I hope not, but I get those vibes as a fan since 85. Um, Hi, John. This comes um, from... Oh, man, I wrote their number down. Hold on. This comes from uh, Torsten. Sorry, I had to look that back up. Uh, I'm a DM fan from Germany since 1993 when a Polish friend of mine brought me the Songs of Faith and Devotion uh, tape cassette album from his summer holidays. I was a 15-year-old upcoming raver kid, but this album blew me away. Since then, a a DM fever curve has covered upon my normal life in the cycle of the album releases and tours. And this year, the fever is back big time. Like a young kid, I buy all music magazines, try to find any snippet on YouTube I can get, and take part unsuccessfully in prize games. Listen to the older albums far more than usual, and will probably buy one more ticket, and thankfully found your podcast. I listened to it for the first time when Ghosts Again was released, and since then I cannot wait for new episodes. Thank you. Uh, This year is completely different. After my big disappointment with the Sounds of the Universe album, after the strong single release of Wrong and the cool demo leak of Hold to Feed, I got used to the fact that I will only like two or three tracks of the newer albums after Exciter. But these two or three tracks were completely satisfying for me with this massive back catalog. And since You Move and Cover Me are even in my all-time top ten, why should I complain? I already liked and enjoyed listening to Ghosts again, and my cosmos is mine. All to- and together, even with the bad quality audio from Wagging Tongue, all my expectations to the new album were completely fulfilled. But as the bad boy that I am, I got to listen to the album today! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. I couldn't resist, and don't worry, I can live with a bad conscience until the moment I will open up my officially pre-ordered album. All that I can say is you are completely right. This album is a pleasure to listen to. Wagging Tongue sounds as I had hoped, and even My Favorite Stranger is good audio quality. People are good as strong before we drown as gold and speak to me as spectacular. It's a pity that Fletch could not have listened to this album. All the best to you and the other Depeches. On Tuesday, I will buy some merch at the pop-up bus which does a promo tour through Germany. And in June, I will see the boys at least once. Keep up the amazing work on your great great podcast. Thank you. Uh, uh, Torsten from the south of Germany near Stuttgart. Thank you very much for the email. All right. Uh, Now we move over to friend of the show, Stephanie, who writes, uh, I have something to say about Memento Mori. I can't go into the details because I have no idea about these recording and these processes. It's just very subjective and seen as a fan. Uh, Here is the text I sent to my husband after the first listen. This is really good, but not mass compatible. Nobody listens to this who is not a fan because he doesn't understand it. Dave's vocals are really great. I love the two-part harmony in the songs as always. And when Dave sings, people are good. Everything will be all right in time. It will be fine. I want to believe everything he says, even though I know that that lyric has a very strong irony to it. Memento Mori is a masterpiece. And they and there uh, were geniuses at work who complimented each other wonderfully. I would have liked one or two more songs sung by Martin, Well, I'm absolutely satisfied. The album is fulfilling the expectations I heard after listening to the snippet at the press conference in October. I feel vindicated as to why I chose Depeche Mode when I was 12, and I'm absolutely proud of them. They've done an incredibly good job. Stephanie from Germany. Uh, Let's see. Simon writes, 7 out of 10 for me. The best thing this side of playing the angel. Strong finish to the album. People Are Good has a great bass line. Before We Drown is cinematic. Never Let Me Go, Filthy, Speak to Me, which is one of the best endings to a DM record in a long time. That one hit hard and brought me to tears. Consistent listening, which has been missing. Not a fan of Caroline's Monkey. 
Cannot wait to get a proper mastered version on Friday to blast through a decent setup. I've been a big critic of recent albums, but this brought DM back home to me. All right. Uh, Johannes writes, Hey, John, thank you for the great pod. Thank you. As a DM fan since the early 80s, I just have to say I love Memento Mori. Always You is on repeat here. What a brilliant track. Um, Hero Protagonist writes, On my third full listen, I'm still getting goosebumps. This is a good sign. Uh, Peter Flyvonholm says, Best album since Ultra. Breathtaking, fantastic new sound. Deep respect for DM. Um, Rob writes, as the album has now leaked due to early arrivals from orders, I was fortunate enough to get a hot, a copy ahead of Friday. Overall, I think this is the best collection of songs and albums since playing the angel, potentially since ultra I'm enjoying the atmospheres on most of the songs. My current favorites are people are good before we drown. Don't say you love me. I'll be disappointed if the band, if the band doesn't play people are good and before we drown on at least some of the dates as I think that they would get a tremendous fan reaction. I can see the comparisons to songs of faith and devotion from many of the tracks, having string arrangements from a certain edge to some of the electronics and guitars. To me, the coolest sound design is the riff that comes in briefly at the two-minute mark of Wagging Tongue. I wish it would repeat again. I could have made the ending more anthemic. Yeah, I agree. It's a pretty cool sound at that moment, too. I actually went and listened to it to hear exactly what you were talking about, and he's right. I love all the crazy effects on the album version of My Favorite Stranger. I just wish the drums weren't so lightweight. I really feel this song could use some more punchy rhythms coming in halfway through to propel it to the finish line. I'm also sad to say Soul With Me hasn't impressed me, but I do hope it grows on me. I thought Always You could have benefited from Martin's vocal instead of Dave's singing the lead, which would have given us one more Martin track. Overall, Memento Mori was worth the wait, and I'm very happy with this release. I can't wait to hear it live. Keep up the great work and hope you enjoy their tour, Rob. Uh, thank you very much, Rob, and appreciate you uh, writing in. Barry Dabovic writes, So I just heard Before We Drown, Well Done. This is not groundbreaking, but I'm... Really enjoying along with People Are Good and Ghosts Again. The only other track I've heard so far is My Cosmos Is Mine, which I expect to skip when I get the CD. Friend of the show and music maker himself, Michael Tennant, writes, I don't get the comparisons to Delta Spirit or Universe. This is definitely its own thing. So far, my favorite is Before We Drown. Yeah, I don't get the comparisons to those, um, to those either. But thank you so much for the, uh, for the email. Uh, Andrew MP writes, I've had the opportunity to listen to the album several times today, and it has exceeded my expectations. It is the best DM album of the 21st century, without a doubt. A Broken Frame 1 writes, Hands down to Memento Mori, probably their best since Violator. Lots of craft working in synths, and this is awesome. Don't Say You Love Me brings me to tears. Every single track is so good. I want to thank God, Martin Gore and Dave Gone for such a huge pleasure. I wasn't expecting this, really not. Um, Solius um, Bu Bulotus writes, It is a good album, actually, it is a good album, actually. Sorry. From the Sounds catalog, it does sound a little bit like Sounds of the Universe. Interesting. At least I can understand the comparison in the best possible way. It's like a hybrid between Sounds of the Universe and Songs of Faith and Devotion. Sounds of the Universe sounds, Songs of Faith, of faith and Devotion, atmosphere, depth level, not necessarily similar. And it looks like this time they focused more on the songs, melodies, and voices rather than the sounds and how it sounds. Usually, they always focused on that part when talking about records. For me, the standout tracks are Don't Say You Love Me, Great Ballad, Gives Me Vibes of Nancy Sinatra, Bang Bang, My Baby Shot Me Down, My Favorite Stranger, Great Up-Tempo, Atmospheric Track, Soul With Me, the best Martin lead track in a while, Before We Drown, a New Cover Me, Maybe Slightly Better, uh, people are good. It's way better on every li uh, listen. The synth beat is on another level. Thank you. Uh, let's see. One more to share with you. This comes from uh, Amy. Uh, Amy, write, uh, Amy writes, uh, It's been a joy to listen to this album today. I really love it in its entirety. Not that I love every song equally, but as a whole, I think it's well done. And I can see it as an album that will really go back to like um, that I really go back to like I do with songs of faith and devo uh, devotion and ultra. 
There's definitely some retro type DM sounds, and it's definitely more synthy than the recent albums in some songs and very atmospheric. I don't feel that it's flat sounding, but really well rounded sonically, if that makes any sense. I think my least favorite track is Wagging Tongue and probably next Caroline's Monkey and Speak to Me. It's not that I hate them. It's just that they're, they're my least favorites, but I suspect that to change. I do like that part in Caroline's Monkey that is somewhat reminiscent of Clean when they say sometimes. Also, when Dave sings that the monkey coos in her ear, I was like, what? There are several ooh words on this album, and I don't remember hearing many or any ooh words before on the albums. Uh, the first time I heard that in my ear, I was thinking that I might uh, that I might like Dave doing ooh sounds in my ears, but I digress. But it was uh, just an unexpected word and sound. Yeah, the people are good one was the one that really stuck out to me. People are good. Um, oh, in the beginning of Wagging Tongue, Amy goes on to say, sounds like the who you better... You better you bet. Just that beginning bit, the intro. Uh, I still hear uh, Barracuda at the uh, start of My Favorite Stranger. Um, I watched an interview today with Dave and Martin and Zane Lowe from Apple. Yeah, that was a good interview. And Dave saying that the lyrics to speak to me are somewhat sarcastic, uh, sarcastic. I've listened to that several times today, and I'm not quite picking up on it yet. Yeah, I did when I went back and listened to it. Uh, Dave had talked about um, when he when he says um, "I'm found," he meant it as being sar- sarcasm. Uh, and when I went back and listened to speak to me, I understood what Dave was was talking about. Um, it can be hard to tell what a song is my favorite. I agree that "Ghost Again" was a great first single. Probably the best choice, and I do love it now, but I'm loving Never Let Me Go, and I think it may be a single as well. I'm getting a bit of Nine Inch Nails Interpol vibes from the guitar-sounding work on it. Lyrically, it's definitely Depeche Mode, but it's a banger, as the kids might say. Uh, Let's see. Also, I love Soul With Me. It's a beautiful song about death, and yet it's somehow joyful. I think Martin is making peace with it again, like he did in Home, but now we've prepared for it. Home has a bit more of a sad but resolved resolved vibe for me. But Soul With Me is like Martin singing a hymn. Uh, I also love Before We Drown, specifically Dave's voice and lyrics. Dave's voice is so smooth and emotionally raw, I think. It's like he's talking to you, and it's direct, and you understand exactly what is at stake in this song scenario. It's fabulous. At first, I wasn't so sure about People Are Good, but that might be growing on me as well. I mean, I like the lyrics and what it's trying to convey, and I like the music, but I don't know if I like them together. All right, I guess that's all of my brilliant insights for now. Sarcasm. Again, my opinions are subject to change, and I'll be interested to see if and when they do. I can't wait to hear what others say about Memento Mori. Again, thanks for all your work. Cheers, uh, Amy. And thank you, Amy. Uh, and everybody who's written in um, so far. Again, talkshownerd at gmail.com. Uh, Leave a comment up on uh, YouTube. So maybe another show tomorrow. We'll see what I get in terms of listener feedback uh, today that I may uh, want to share. Definitely a show on Friday. We'll talk about the tour, opening night, and the official release of Memento Mori. As always, thank you so much for checking out my Nerd World and Depeche Mode of the podcast. If you want to support the show and you happen to be a fan of science fiction, I have written a science fiction adventure series called Embark. Seven books in all in the series, available on Amazon. Look for John J O N Justice and Embark. Great for ages 11 and up, but it's written for adults. The main character in Embark Book One, by the way, Taft Guardia, is a uh, massive Depeche Mode fan. It's set in the future at a time when the music of my generation is popular, similar to something that they did inside of Ready Player One. So there's a lot of uh, direct and indirect uh, Depeche Mode references throughout Embark Book One and the entire series. MyNerdWorld.net or Amazon.com. John J O N Justice. If you like to read sci-fi, go and check out those books. Uh, ebook, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook, all available for the entire series. Talk to you guys again real soon. I hope wherever you are, you are happy, you are healthy, and you are safe. Bye.
Yard Road. <laughs>